Like some of these older buildings has burned down multiple times. What's up, Ina? <laughs> you get a lot of this in the city. What's up, guys? Today I am walking the streets of Kiev, Ukraine, one of my favorite cities in the world where I currently live. And I'm going to show you some of the coolest neighborhoods in the city. So this street is Yaroslava Val, probably the most European feeling street of the city. It's a very good walking, pedestrian friendly type place, cafes, restaurants. Right off of Yaroslava Val, there are these very cool older neighborhoods. Um, don't know the name of the streets to be honest. Great place just to canvas, just to go through the side streets, take it in. It's got sort of that old world feel to it. This street is one parallel to Yaroslava Val, and it's got a lot of flavor going on here. And so you either like this stuff or you don't, like some of these older buildings that are decrepit, uninhabited, need to be restored. And depending on what you like, that either adds charm or flavor or it depresses you because everything's not preserved and nice. Uh, personally, I like how there are many different, many different architectural layers and feels going on in small amounts of spaces. Here we go, we got some, I don't know if you can see that through the light, but there's a mural. There's a mural on this building. You see a lot of these murals in the city. Yeah, all these little streets here, all these little side streets in this zone, again, off Yaroslava Ball, are very cool. Good place just to get lost in. Here's a new art room. What's it called? The Naked Room. Went in there last week, pretty cool. I also have coffee. Alevich is a big, big name here. I don't know the history exactly, but I know he, he's either from here or he lived here. One of my favorite restaurants, Zigzag. Very stylishly done, good food, good service. Yeah, sort of hidden away here. Okay, let's take a right, let's see what's going on in here. So you get a lot of this in the city. A lot of courtyards. A lot of, let's call them secret passageways that just lead to, well, stuff like this. If you're a curious person, this is the place because it's not Switzerland. Things were not laid out with organization, let's say. So there are many layers, many, many layers to the city. Like things were built, obviously at different time periods in different ways and then so you find these like labyrinths sort of lacing through courtyards and restaurants and this is a coffee shop back here and that's that's what I mean like you can just find yourself stumbling upon random coffee shops that are not going to be out in the open we're in the very center but you can get this which is great like these little parks and these calm zones. And there we go, it pokes through to the other side. That was completely unplanned. The collection of interesting architecture continues. Love these doors on this building. I think it's a Gothic style. And overall it's just, a, it's a nice vibe. The cars are moving slower than the people right now. And that's the case with a lot of the center of the city here. So if you gotta get around, walking works really well. The metro works really well. And when you do need a car, you need to get some distances, then Uber is fantastic here. Fairy tale medieval feel to it. What's up? How cool is Kiev today? It's amazing. It's cool every day. Yeah, every day. I've had very little bad experiences with 
people on the streets here. It's a welcoming feel uh, to tourists, even though well, I live here, but still, I'm an outsider for sure. So here we're coming up on Golden Gate, and this is probably the biggest tourist site, or one of them. And this is one of the original gates in the city. It's a replica because everything is wooden here. Everything has burned down multiple times. So this architecture is all from turn of the century, turn of the century. I think it's all like early 1900s. Years ago, the currency took an absolute beating here, but it's stabilized and come around. Actually, this is the best I've seen it for the Grivna since I moved here three years ago. It was up to 28, maybe even 29. Now it's down at what? Roughly 24. Metro stop, Zolotoy Voroti. It's either this one or another one that's the deepest one in the world. And it, very cool, even if you don't want to go on the metro, go down the escalators, because they go down forever. What is it, October, October 19th? And we're getting this great, beautiful, warm weather. Hopefully the video captures it, captures the feel. Everyone's out, spirits are high. Opera house. And the cloud, the skies are like, um, skies are a little hazy today and there's some burning going on out in the countryside. They're burning the leaves or the grasses or whatever. And well, I'm not gonna lie. Air is not always great in the city. If I'm gonna say there's one sort of annoying issue in this city when on the streets is the fact that the emissions, there are a lot of vehicles without catalytic converters and they use like some inferior gas that doesn't burn well. So you, you get those hits, you get those hits of a tailpipe often. And it's not overbearing, but it's enough to notice. I don't know if you're sensitive to that stuff. I don't want to bitch. It's beautiful. It's cool. Eight dollars a ticket or something like that. So to do these cultural things in Kyiv, uh, very accessible, very easy to get tickets usually. Here's a hot topic. Uh, language. People speak both Ukrainian and Russian. And it's changing, it's changing somewhat. The young people are speaking much more Ukrainian. There's been a big emphasis from the government to speak more Ukrainian. On the streets of Kyiv, arbitrarily, I'm gonna say it's 60, 65% Russian that you hear, 40, 35% Ukrainian. So either language works. Now, one thing to make certain as a tourist, say Kyiv, and you're gonna pronounce it wrong unless you have amazing skills, linguistic skills, but I, it's Kyiv, in Kiev, and Kiev is the Ukrainian transliteration. Kiev is the Russian transliterization. And most of you have heard Kiev from the outside. Better to say Kiev when you when you're here. And even me saying Kiev, I'm going to pronounce it incorrectly, and people are going to think I'm saying Kiev. And I'd like to say to those that police me in the comments right now, because I know you're coming. Say 333, please, quickly, 333. And unless you speak English extremely well, you're gonna mess that up. But the cool thing is the languages, they flow well together here. Like even uh, one person will speak Ukrainian and the other one will speak Russian and they're in the same conversation harmoniously. So I, I, it's a testament to the culture. I think it's a very cool aspect that there doesn't seem to be a big sticking point or like one language trying to like absolutely crush the other one on the streets here. Online, you'll see a different story for sure. But I think Ukrainian's the future here because the young people are all studying Ukrainian in school, uh, more so than Russian. So the young people are the future. Therefore, Ukrainian will probably be the future language. City like this just has to be a nightmare with the utilities. I mean, it's 
it's all they're just layers upon layers upon layers of infrastructure always ripping up the streets here you want some history here you go saint sophia built in the 11th century and named after Hagia sophia in istanbul definitely worth checking out you can go up into this tower um there's a beautiful area inside there put some time into it what is really cool about this city is it's close to a lot of things so istanbul seriously hour and 45 50 minutes to get there berlin under two hours helsinki under two hours so you have this this city that's sort of smack in the middle of so many things we're gonna go over there saint michael's I used to live in that building, or is it back there with the antenna on top? And from, from what I was told, it was the former KGB building. Yeah. And so there's a babushka, babushka mafiosa. And for those outside of Ukraine or the Slavic world, the babushkas are like, they're like Facebook, but better as in they know the algorithms of your life. Like they know if your relationship will be successful. They know if your kids are gonna do well in life. They know exactly your mood. They know who you spend time with. They, they are ahead in many ways of the tech of Silicon Valley. So in that building over there, that Babushka Mafia, so I always had to check in with them. And I, be, I got really close to them, and that's a little bit dangerous, to be honest, because they always want to get into your business, which can be annoying after a while. I loved them. They were like mothers to me, but the other side of me was like, all right, give me some space. Just a little warning if you move over here. I grew up Protestant, going to church with my family when I was young, but I can't consider myself a religious person. So from the outside, I love these Orthodox churches. First of all, the architecture on the outside is very beautiful. Secondly, they feel more uplifting than, say, going into a Catholic cathedral. This wasn't a great example because it's pretty dark in there, but some of them are pretty bright and there's like a lot of light coming down into them and maybe it's because i have no clue what's going on really in the religion that i'm not connected to the say heaviness of it but overall i gotta say there's like a more uplifting free feeling to it oh, <laughs> oh my god look at that look at that Hey, you speak English? Yeah, I don't English. Serious? No, yeah, serious. Random. Concert every Random. Friday, Saturday to 11, every Friday. Saturday in this place. Yeah, I don't know. Why don't you understand? Kitaisky, Kitaisky and Tolko. No. 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 Love these details. Do you see Saturday to 11? Yes? That's actually not normal. The hard sale is not a normal Ukrainian tray. So a few tourist places will have that. I got was a Georgian restaurant and like she's out there trying to do the hard sale, but there's really very, very, very little of that here. She was sweet, she was nice, but like if you know those countries you go to, like Egypt is probably the the maximum of getting hit by the hawkers. But Ukraine, very, very little. Found this little alleyway the other day. And so I'm gonna repeat myself, but 
get into this city and just canvas it. Because the coolest stuff is not on a map or in any guidebook. And then into this new cafe. And now to the street, Silchovich Strelciv. And I love this street. It's a very cool street. It's about 20 minutes from downtown, like the center of the city. It's about a 20 minute walk. And there are a lot of restaurants, a lot of cool little businesses here. But over here is this place, Masha Cake. Look at these desserts. The Ecuador is fantastic. Oriol, if you like Oriol, but everything's very well done. Quality, beautiful, amazing. And that's Val. And very cool people here. That's that's the other plus. The staff is very, very nice. Привет, Peter. Привет. How Классно, мы любим. Привет. Можно трофел, пожалуйста. Один. Один, с собой. Да. This is the brownie. This is um, if you eat two of these back to back, you will get type two diabetes. They're that sweet, but they're good. Yeah, Chorney, пожалуйста. That place is the bomb. Well, Ukraine. Let's just say, let's just say the honest, uh, the truth, the honest truth here is it's not known for its friendly, overt, overtly friendly service in businesses like that. But there are big exceptions like there. This is also a nice little gem. Right coffee bar. None of these people are giving me anything. I just want to show, share with you the, the little nuggets in the city that are definitely, I think these places are off the tourist path for sure. Yo! What's up, Ina? I'm Peter. Gregor, nice to meet you. Cool. I was just about to comment, so check this out. In Kyiv, pre revolution yeah. of dignity 2014, mm -hmm. nobody would stop in the crosswalks. Right, 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 right. After everyone stopped in the crosswalks. In the heart of the city, yet. There are many pathways like this into the nature. And some of them lead to cool places, others lead to, we'll say, more mysterious, darker places. In this part of the city, it's very hilly, so there are a lot of different corners and little nooks and crannies to get yourself lost in. It's really a city to be a kid in. If you really want to explore, uh, how about this? It's not a predictable place by any stretch. Looks a bit dodgy in here, but it's really not. I've walked through here dozens of times. That shit's what you gotta watch out for is those dogs. Now, I've never been bitten by a dog, and I want you to be scared like dogs are going to chase you in Kiev. But when you get off into these hills, into these more random zones, grab like a, a bottle or a, a rock or something. Not to throw at them, but they understand the language of not to come closer, I believe. They've been trained well in that department. Yeah. You don't want rabies. Okay, guys, let's bring out, let's get into the lightness here. Now, we're gonna go out to a little viewpoint. That was a shortcut.